So you feel a, a, a realistic and a vigorous sense of opposition yeah. in that they are, that Christianity and Buddhism, in a diff rather different way, are in fact, uh, as it were, more intellectually intelligible and uh, complementary to a scientific worldview. Yes, yes. They have a theory, and it's a theory that I don't agree with, but there is a theory there. Uh, and without a theory, what can I say? <laughs> you know, then, then it's not something that I can engage. Um, I, I once wrote something rather disparaging uh, about ultra-liberal Christian, Christianity, and that I found myself more, uh, in some ways, more akin to a fundamentalist, because at least they haven't forgotten what it is to believe something. Uh, and I got a copy of a fundamentalist newspaper from, I think, from New Mexico that praised me. <laughs> because what they really, I think what their real concern was, was not odd atheist physicists. That wasn't what they're worried about. What they're worried about are the liberal Christians. Oh, I see. So that, in fact, that the... Uh, the, the, the fundamentalist Christians see you scientists as worthy opponents Well, in the same way that you scientists I don't, or I don't you physicists they, are no, seeing... I, think, I, don't, I, I wouldn't draw that implication. Mm. I think they just found a surprising ally in the battle that they really care about, their battle with the liberal wing of, of, of Christianity. But uh, please don't let me give the f wrong impression. I think the harm, I think enormous harm is done uh, in, by religion, not just in the name of religion, but actually by religion. And um, well, I think how, it's how, how is it? Uh, uh, tell me the harm that is done by religion, as opposed to the harm that's done in the name of it. Well, I think uh, people who crash airplanes into office buildings in order to destroy them uh, must really believe in paradise and that this is something that their God wants them to do and that they'll be rewarded in paradise. And if they don't believe that, then it's a very foolish career move. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but, it, you know, the idea that God has, whether it's Allah or Jehovah or whatever, has dictated uh, certain ways of behaving, certain ways of worshiping, and that it's incumbent on you to force others to be behave that way and to worship in that way. God, think of all the harm that's been done throughout all the ages uh, by people who believe that and believe it very sincerely. One could j just go on and on and on about the number of very sincerely religious people who were led by their religion to do the most awful things. But in fact, that was very much an aspect before oh, the diaspora. Yes, and I, I couldn't, I do agree. But just coming back to what we were talking about before, it is the religions that have a theory of the world, it seems to me, at least in recent centuries, that do the harm. So the, uh, the very sincere, true believers are the ones you have to watch out for, even though they may have something more to show for themselves intellectually than the more liberal mm. religious, but they're the dangerous ones. Well, given the fact that the current president of the United States could be described as a sincere, true believer, I wanted to know whether Stephen himself was alarmed by the apparent growth of fundamentalist Christianity in his own country. I don't see the United States in the grips of a... Uh, a really disturbing uh, religious uh, awakening. Uh, I think what's much more frightening in the world is Islam, where uh, people, it seems to me, take their religion seriously to the point of madness. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, there have been times in the history of the world when Islam was a far more tolerant religion than Christianity. But that, that is not the case now. But there is undoubtedly, for, uh, certainly for a European, the impression that there's a very strong association between Christianity 
and patriotism in the way that simply doesn't exist in Europe, certainly not in my own country, in the United Kingdom. Yes, uh, well, it's... I know that it, that impression exists, and I think Americans think more highly of religion than Europeans do. I sometimes think that Americans believe in religion much more than Europeans do. They don't believe in God much more than Europeans do. <laughs> but they believe that religion is good for you. Oh, yes. And um, without being particularly religious in any meaningful way. You know, I know many people who go, say they're religious and go to church every Sunday and uh, belong to church organizations. And then when you talk to them and you ask them, well, do you really, you know, do you really think after death this is going to happen? They say, I have no idea. I don't know. It's all a mystery, but as I think it's good to be religious. This is the faith I grew up with. As a physicist, you have to decide what you think is true, and you get in the habit of that kind of intellectual activity. And because if you work on the wrong theory and it isn't true, you wasted your professional time, and uh, you keep having to make judgments of truth or falsity. And so truth becomes uh, very important to you. Uh, for most people, truth is not as important as um, good behavior or loyalty to your ethnic group or loyalty to your family traditions. And uh, you know, truth is something that you don't worry about very much. Although, of course, that in, the, uh, in the Middle Ages, and indeed, when people were opposing atheism in the 17th century, it was insisted that the truthfulness of religion was what guaranteed good behavior. Yes, and many people believe that. But an awful lot of people also believe it doesn't matter whether it's true. You have to be religious because that will guarantee good behavior. You know, the wonderful line of Gibbons um, about the pagan religions, he said, the, uh, the multitude of gods, uh, Gibbon said, uh, the common people found them all equally true, and the philosophers found them all equally false, and the magistrates found them all equally useful. Oh, yes. And I think many people uh, in America, and undoubtedly in Europe, uh, are in the position of the magistrates that Gibbon was talking about. They find them useful. Um, although I don't, I, I really don't think that uh, I don't see religion as actually uh, inspiring moral behavior. In fact, you very often hear people say, well, these people who uh, blow themselves up uh, for some religious reason in the Middle East, or Hindu mobs who destroy a mosque, or Muslim mobs who kill Hindus, or, uh, that they're not really religious, that real religion doesn't involve that kind of behavior. I think what they're saying is that they have a moral sense which allows them to distinguish what is religious from what is not religious. I think, for example, uh, George Bush said that uh, these terrorists have hijacked a great religion so, because their actions, their terrorist actions, don't fit his idea of religion. You see, what's really happening there is that instead of using religion to decide what is moral, Mm -hmm. They're using their moral sense, which fortunately is a perfectly good, reasonable, enlightened moral sense, to decide what is religious. And uh, if that's the case, then what's the point of the religion? Finally, I wanted to know whether there were any particular reasons, apart from being constantly asked by people like myself, why Stephen felt it necessary to address himself to the topic of religion more than many of his colleagues did. Oh, I try not to do it too much. You know, I don't want to become the village atheist. Uh, and I do get involved in a lot of other issues like missile defense and uh, uh, neo, well, post-constructionism, neo-modernism. But um, I do spend probably a little bit more time than I should on, on religion and uh, I have a certain amount of hostility to uh, to it uh, I think the most rational reason for it is because of the harm 
that I see it does. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, many people do simply awful things out of sincere religious belief, not using religion as a cover, uh, the way Saddam Hussein may have done, but really because they believe that this is what God wants them to do. Going all the way back to Abraham being willing to sacrifice Isaac because God told him to, to do that. Putting God ahead of humanity is a terrible thing. Yeah. Um, another reason is because I'm offended by the kind of smarmy religiosity that's all around us perhaps more in America than in, than in Europe, uh, and not really that harmful, because not really that intense or even that serious. But just, you know, after a while, you get tired of hearing clergymen in, giving the invocation at various public celebrations, and you feel, haven't we outgrown all this? Do we have to listen to this? Yeah. Uh, but then, maybe at the very bottom of it, I really don't like God. You know, I mean, it's silly to say I don't like God because I don't believe in God, but mm. in the same sense that I don't like Iago, or I don't like the Reverend Slope, or, or any of the other villains of literature, the God of traditional Judaism and Christianity and Islam seems to me a terrible character. He's a god who will, who's obsessed with the degree to which people worship him and anxious to punish with the most awful torments those who don't worship him in the right way. Now, I realize that many people don't believe in that anymore who call themselves Muslims or Jews or Christians, but that is the traditional mm. god. And he's a terrible character. I don't like him. Um... I have a friend, or had a friend, now dead, Abdus Salam, a very devout Muslim, who was trying to bring science into the universities in the Gulf states. And he, he told me that he had a terrible time because um, although they were very receptive to technology, they felt that science would be a corrosive to religious belief. And they were worried about it. Damn it, I think they were right. It is corrosive of religious belief. And it's a good thing, too. That's terrific. <laughs> <laughs>